Alrighty, what's up guys, Simple Player Nacho here. Eddie Gluskin, the groom. You take one look at this face, and you run the other way. Why? Because Eddie Gluskin is an insane, abusive, ruthless, sadistic, barbaric, inhuman, hopeless romantic. I mean, he really is the ladies' man. If you've played out Last Whistleblower, you know Eddie Gluskin's name. He's probably the antagonist that stood out the most, and with good reason. Eddie Gluskin is insanely obsessed with the game's protagonist. He wants you to become his bride. And I mean bride in the most purest form. Even if you're a guy, he wants to completely uh, snip off your man parts in order to become the perfect bride. To uh, drop his seeds. Now these are his words, not mine. Unfortunately for Eddie, he hasn't been lucky in the love department, so many brides have come and gone. And what I mean by that is he's killed and mangled a bunch of people, making him a vicious serial killer. It's not hard to guess what made Eddie this way. He had a very abusive childhood where he was sexually abused by his father and his uncle and lived the life of a suburban child where everything and everyone had to be perfect. Unfortunately for Eddie, because of his past, he was far from perfect and he decided to take out his anger on innocent people. So without further ado, let's look at Eddie Gluskin's lines step by step and analyze to see what we can find about this enigmatic character. Rather die than be with me. And die. Now these few lines are a testament to how disconnected Eddie Gluskin is and how quickly, with like the snap of a finger, his attitude towards people changes. Now the protagonist here just impaled his foot and fell off of an elevator shaft, so he's in deep, deep pain. But even then, Eddie Gluskin is still focused on this supposed betrayal on his part. But I think the craziest part about this entire scene is how genuinely hurt Eddie Gluskin seems. <laughs> This fan fiction of his that he's gonna find the perfect bride. Just imagine how terrifying it would be if this was reality for that person. You'd have to be walking on eggshells all the time. And one little misunderstanding that seems like a betrayal would mean death. Now I know what you're thinking. Duh, he's a freaking psychopath. Of course he's gonna kill you for the smallest circumstances. But there is a rule book to every psychopath. There's a hierarchy to what is the worst thing you can do to them. And cheating or lying seems to be on the top of the list for Eddie Gluskin. Because again, he is a hopeless romantic. And most, if not all of his crimes are born out of passion. You make yourself a gift. A delicacy. Unwrapped and unwrapped again. Sailed. Sounds pretty f***ing romantic, doesn't it? I wonder what Eddie saw when his parents would interact with each other. Was this the dynamic where Eddie's mom was just this piece of literal cake to be devoured over and over again? To where Eddie's father had this god-given right to pleasure him- Okay, I hate saying this word, but to pleasure himself with Eddie's mom. I mean, Eddie Gluskin is so disconnected, that's pretty obvious from just the face alone, but he's put himself in this position that everything and everyone is just a tool to be used over and over again. And that must be how he felt when his uncle and his father abused him. I wonder if these are actually the same lines that those creeps would use on little young Eddie as they ruined him forever. I've been vulgar. And I want to say I'm sorry. I just... You know how a man gets what he wants to know. He wants to be a different man. Wow, I think this is the shining light in all this madness. Eddie knows he's doing bad. This is all wrong. He's still aware of these old-fashioned customs of how a man is supposed to treat a woman, of course, in his time. It's a little bit different than what we're used to today. But this is the single detail that makes Eddie Gluskin an extremely interesting character. It's like he's trying to relive the glory of the golden age, 1950s or 60s suburbia, where he had this perfect little family. 
He even makes the protagonist a promise that he's going to become a different man. Well, Eddie, you're gonna have to start over probably, I don't know, when you started killing people. I want a family, a legacy, to be the father I never had. I'll never let anything happen to our children. Not like... Ah, don't you hate it when people don't finish their sentences? It's like... Well, it's like Eddie Gluskin right here. Eddie says he wants a family, a legacy in his image. Could you imagine that? It's almost like the search for the perfect bride is simply for them to be a vessel for his, what he calls legacy, the, the Gluskin legacy. Now, I don't know if Eddie Gluskin would be a better father than his father. You know, maybe we're being too rough on Eddie. He doesn't want history to repeat itself. He's learned from the mistakes of his father. No, dude, he's completely insane. But the subtle little detail here where he doesn't finish his sentence while he's remembering about his father and pretends to not finish the sentence, I think the writers were trying to sneak that in there to give the player a little bit of sympathy towards Eddie. Darling, I need you to try to bleed less. I know you sex often into your insane wounds with your suffering, but you really need to make an Holy f ouch, ouch, ouch. Now this poor dude is receiving an improvised surgery. They call it the Gluskin Fuskin. Now besides the fact that anyone would be screaming off the top of their lungs if this was happening to them getting stabbed down there, Eddie seems a little bit frustrated, or disappointed even. It seems to me like he doesn't really like any minor annoyances even though he's torturing someone. Now the fairer sex comment is pretty interesting. You know, I mean, he puts men over women in terms of the pain gap. So the guy's screaming, rightfully so. I just wonder what the reverse effect would be. What is Eddie actually looking for? Is he looking for someone to not scream and yell? Would he be in love with that person then? You know what I just noticed, guys? It's kind of hard to understand a psychopath. That's my point, basically. A woman has to suffer some things. It's not pleasant, I know. But just try to endure for my sake, for the sake of our children. It won't take long. A few snips of the flesh here and here. Cut away everything vulgar. A soft place to welcome my seed. To grow our family. Ah, our poor little, little protagonist. Very little. So it's our turn for the chopping block. See if we are the perfect bride. Of course, that requires surgery in the eyes of Eddie Gluskin. It's very interesting that he stages this whole thing as a sacrifice towards him and their future children, I guess. You know, in real life, obviously, childbirth is a huge sacrifice in the mother's part. Eddie seems pretty intent in sacrificing little Waylon Park down there. I mean, as you'll see later on in the video, he's done this a bunch of, I mean, like over a dozen times. But easily, the most interesting word that I have to focus on here is vulgar. When referring to specifically penises, I know it's hilarious when <laughs> YouTubers say that word, Eddie makes it out to be a bad word, and this has to circle back to Eddie's abusive childhood. And I think he's grown in an obsession with castrating pe penises <laughs> because it's the trauma that his uncle and his father had him endure. <laughs> <laughs> Fine! Go! You and the rest of these ungrateful sluts! I mean, just absolutely demented, right? Because we know who Eddie's referring to. He's referring to all of his past victims that he's killed, maimed, and mangled. Not just the dudes that he's tried to transform into with the perfect bride, but also the women, the various women that he's killed in his past. You leave his grasp or his attention for just a few seconds and he freaking flips out, dude. But I think the mystery here is what exactly he saw in the protagonist Waylon Park. Now because you are playing the game, you know, this protagonist in general has special clearance. He escapes most of the time in his encounters with Eddie. So I think in a really twisted way, and I'm gonna say this, Eddie sees Waylon as the one that got away. 
you know, that special person that you wanted to be with so badly and you got with them and then boom, one night stand. I think Eddie Gluskin is obsessed with Waylon because he keeps leaving him and therefore they're playing this cat and mouse game. But it's like at the same time, this is a void that will never be filled for Eddie because no matter how many people he maims and castrates, he will never find the perfect bride. He just wants to be trapped in this mentality of catch and release and catch and release. Which explains all the bodies you're gonna see hung up right now. You can hang like the rest of them. Heavier than you look. If this is you on the honeymoon, I hate to imagine the Hold still. God damn it, what are you? Oh, damn it, darling! No, you need to behave! We could have been beautiful. Well, there's a lot to talk about here. First thing that pops into my mind is this betrayal. What is it? What does it mean to Eddie Gluskin? Because it seems to be very important to him and like it repeats over and over again throughout the game. Everyone's out to get him. Everyone's out to betray him and completely destroy their trust towards Eddie. I think this insecurity comes from the fact that Eddie's own father abused him. So, you know, it, it becomes pretty f***ing hard to trust anyone at that point. So heavier than you look, if this is you on the honeymoon, I'd hate to imagine our anniversary. So apparently being hung up is Eddie Gluskin's version of a honeymoon. Now this is a slight dig and somewhat shallow personification of Eddie's views towards women's weight and stuff like that. And again, it harkens back to that golden age traditional view about the way women should behave and act. Again, he uses the word behave over and over again. And Eddie's final words, we could have been beautiful. Isn't that just really sad? <laughs> no, of course not. Eddie is a monster, this is 100%. I'm not gonna feel sorry for this guy. But it just goes to show that his sadistic views on people, all the killings, all the horrible pain he's inflicted on people, was born out of love. And believe it or not, in a game like Outlast, love was a huge theme throughout this game. And unfortunately for Eddie and his demise, that's all he ever chased. That's all he wanted. The perfect bride. But no, the perfect bride does not mean stability. That's not what Eddie Gluskin wanted. He just wanted to keep chasing after this imaginative, 100% perfect person. This guy lived in the fantasy world. I mean, he was crazy, obviously. And so it killed him. And that was the end of Eddie Gluskin born for the passionate kill. There's a lot of content behind Eddie's lines. What did you think of them? What did you make them out to be? Be sure to comment down below your thoughts, theories, and opinions on Eddie Gluskin. Did you feel any sympathy for this guy? I certainly didn't. If you have a minute, why don't you go ahead and check out the second channel where I play horror indie games that are pretty damn random and fun. So go ahead and check that out. It's going to be in the description. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you liked it, be sure to like and subscribe for more horror content, mysteries, and analyzing horrible people like this. You guys have an awesome rest of your day, and as always, stay single.